Alrighty guys, we're back for some Radadrovic Shrines, and this is a Dominaria United Standard Brew. We're going to go over the deck, then hop right into some normal play mode, but first things first, for anyone who may not know, I'm Red Cat, and I play aggro decks and any decks with red in them as well, so I hope that sounds fun to you. Also, we do got that Discord link down in the description if you're interested in joining that up. So, what do we got in the build here? Well, this one is based around Radadrobic of Urborg, and in the comments of my last Joda video, there was a suggestion to play Radadrobic with Joda inside a Shrines deck. This is the build I was able to come up with, so I hope you like it, and thank you so much for the suggestion. While I do think the build's going to be a little janky, um, and we're going to have fun either way. So, what is Radadrobic? It's a 4-mana, 3-3, three, three. Vigilance, Ward 2. Yeah, that's going to come in handy. Other zombies you control have Vigilance. Whenever another legendary creature, all of our shrines are legendary, you control dies, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's not legendary, and it's a 2-2 two -two black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. Very nice, because that's going to allow us to do things like drop a depopulate and not worry too much. And depopulate is going to be very, very important, and there are going to be plenty of times where right on turn four, you're going to have to drop the depopulate just to survive. So we'll see if that uh, comes into play today, right? Now, we obviously have the three Jodas in here, too. It's going to work wonders by buffing our other legendary cards, of course, our shrines, right? But then also, it'll help us grab more shrines from the deck and slap them onto the board. So it's going to be very powerful. Uh, let's go over the shrines real quick. We do have a single Lost Wisdom and a single Hidden Cruelty. And then we have three Boundless Vigors. We got three Ancient Wars and three Shared Purpose as well. <laughs> what do all these do? Lost Wisdom is a 2-mana 0-4 with Flying. At the beginning of your end step, you may pay one. Whenever you do, or when you do, target player mills X cards where X is the number of shrines you control. Um, you're probably not going to use that ability too often. You could use it against yourself because we do have some cards in here, which we'll go in over in just a second, that could help you bring cards back from the grave, but it's probably not going to be worth doing that. Okay, Boundless Vigor here is a 2-mana 1-1, with Trample. At the beginning of your end step, you may pay one. All the shrines are going to have that, right? When you do, put a plus one, plus one counter on target shrine for each shrine you control. So you guys can see how this is really going to pair beautifully with Radadrobic, as you'll be able to have like multiple Boundless on the board, or yeah, right? Because it gets rid of that legendary effect. Of course, Mirrorbox also does a similar thing where the legend rule doesn't apply to you. I just think it's going to be a little bit worse than the combo with Radadrobic because Radadrobic is also just a good creature that's going to pair beautifully with everything else here. For example, right, Mirrorbox doesn't allow us to successfully depopulate where when Radadrobic is on the board, the depopulate drops and we don't worry too much about our board state, right? <laughs> so yeah, uh, spoiler, we do have one Mirrorbox in here. So, Ancient Wars is a 3-mana 2-2 two -two with First Strike. I think that First Strike could really come in handy, especially if you're dropping counters on this from the Boundless, too. It's going to be pretty sweet. At the beginning of your end step, you may pay 1. When you do, Goshintai of Ancient Wars deals X damage to target player or Planeswalker, where X is the number of shrines you control. So, hopefully, this will help us close out some games, huh? So, Shared Purpose is a 4-mana 1-3, ew, <laughs> with Vigilance. Everything else about this card is pretty sweet, though. At the beginning of your end step, you may pay 1. If you do, create a 1-1 one, one colorless spirit creature token for each shrine you control. So, allowing us to go wide on a board state or just get some chump blockers down could be huge. It's not going to be unheard of to go ahead and get like four spirits from this in this particular build, right? And there are ways to buff a wide board state in this deck, but don't count on it, right? Uh, I think going wide and getting chump blockers with some one ones is perfectly fine. We don't need ways to buff that wide board state, you know? 
As for the Hidden Cruelty, at the beginning of your end step, oh, it's a 4 mana 2-2 with Death Touch, by the way. So all of our shrines can die to cut down, unfortunately, right? At the beginning of your end step, you may pay 1. When you do, destroy target creature with Toughness X or less, where X is the number of shrines you control. Honestly, that'll probably hit a lot. <laughs> it's a pretty deadly shrine, but... As far as the other shrines go, like the Naya colored shrines are probably the most powerful. And then Lost Wisdom and Hidden Cruelty, maybe they're just looking for a better shrine list. But in this particular list, I think they're going to be the weak links overall. Okay, we got an Ao of the Dawn Sky. It's a pretty solid legendary creature. It does a lot here. It could help us look for shrines with that uh, first ability when it dies. Or we could put... Two plus one plus one counters on each permanent you control. That's a creature or a vehicle. And that's what I mean by maybe we can buff a wide board state when the AO dies. Either way, it's just a big old threat in the air that the opponent has to deal with. And when they do, we still get benefits from it. So on the top end of the build, we have a brilliant restoration. Um, <laughs> seven mana sorcery. Very expensive, especially when it has four white in it. But I don't think we're going to have any issues actually casting this card return all artifact and enchantment cards from your graveyard to the battlefield yep that hits all of our shrines because they're all enchantments so pretty sick huh so we have four relic of legends which i should have went over a little sooner because it's going to be a very key piece to this build this is a three mana artifact you can tap it to add one mana of any color Tap an untapped legendary creature you control, add one mana of any color. So very easy to ramp with this. You can tap down your own shrines to immediately use their abilities. Like they don't have to have haste or anything. It's just tap an untapped legendary you control. So yeah, it makes all of our shrines uh, effectively be able to tap for its own ability, which is actually pretty powerful. And again, yeah, they don't need haste, so... Also, four Fable of the Mirror Breakers to help us win a little bit more. Also, the discard on the second chapter could help us uh, put shrines into the grave, potentially to uh, bring them back with Brilliant Restoration at some point. Also, forgot to go over the Jukai Visionary. Lots to go over in the deck. I apologize for hopping all over the place here. Um, Jukai is mainly in here. It's another Legendary, which is cool. It is another enchantment, too. So, like, it does work with Joda. It does work with Brilliant Restoration. But also, if somehow your restoration goes into the grave and you really need it back, then that bottom channel ability can help you bring that card back to your hand. It is worth noting that when you use that channel ability, it can only target non-legendary cards in your graveyard. So there's not too much you can hit with it, but it's really in here for that restoration. And then also the top ability can help us ramp a little bit, but I don't know if we're going to need a ton of ramp. We have 26 lands in here. And while it is pretty heavy where we want to hit that fourth land no matter what, having the ramp with the Relic of Legends is just huge. I don't think we're going to have any issues finding mana. So we got four Plaza of Heroes over here, as well as a bunch of Triomes that I thought about for a little bit, as well as some dual lands that I thought about for a little bit. We have a Who Endures, a Crucible, and a Seed of the Empire. Again, I don't think we're going to have any issues with the mana base at all. No honorable mentions this time, guys, because I feel like there's just, like, too much we could pack into this. Since it has all five mana colors, I mean, one honorable mention would be adding more mirror boxes. But we already have a mirror box in here, so it doesn't really fit with the whole honorable mentions theme, you know what I mean? <laughs> Either way, guys, hopefully I went over the deck well enough. I was kind of hopping all over the place. I do wish I would have went over Relic a little sooner because it's going to be very important in this deck, but yeah, we'll see. Either way, let's go ahead, take it into some normal play mode, and see how we do. Right into that first match, guys. Took like a second, maybe, to find that match. My goodness. It's like the opponent was just waiting for us. Okay, it's not a bad hand. It's not the best hand, but we have a lot to draw here. Plaza of Heroes? Sure, we'll start with that. 
Yeah, we probably maybe starting with the planes. What the heck are you? Are we up against a defender build? Oh, I hope so. Go ahead and get Boundless Vigor down first before the Lost Wisdom. Lost Wisdom would have been fine first too, but I think this is... Whoa! Going right into a Johnny. Oh my goodness. This is going to be some kind of weird deck that we just don't see. Mirror box would be fine. I'm going to go Goshintai. And then no attacks here. And we're actually going to buff the Goshintai. So that way we can fly in and hit that Ajani sooner. Right? Because we can drop Mirror box to buff all our legendaries next turn. This is going to be crazy, guys. What on earth is the opponent playing? It is. It's going to be defenders. We never get to see this in ranked. This is going to be a fun battle of jank. I'm very excited right now. Okay, let's go ahead. Uh, Relic of Legends is pretty good, isn't it? Um, we probably want to get more damage on the Ajani before they buff all of those. I guess we'll go mirror box here over relic because we don't want to tap down. I guess we could have. Yeah, it depends. It depends. To so we'll go ahead, get those counters in the air. <laughs> That's pretty sick, actually. That's a five nine. Maybe we should have just been attacking the opponent's face. I kind of want to take care of that Ajani, though, which is pretty scary. Oh my goodness, they get the blockers in the air. Joda's ready to smack this board though. Another Plaza of Heroes is fine. Uh, actually, another Plaza of Heroes is necessary to actually play the Joda there, so uh, nice. In other words, Relic of Legends would have helped us. Okay, yeah, let's get the Joda down. Oh, that's the, it's the pain land. I was wondering why it was asking me. So I guess we'll swing. They're going to chump. Uh, this has trample. No, opponent, come back. Come back, opponent. It wasn't over, buddy. Oh, no. That's what I get for going for normal play mode. But look at how fun that deck actually was. Ah, oh, man, the Battle of Jenks was ended too soon. Was it as simple as Joda? Hopefully we don't have too many people conceding. It's not every day that I play normal play mode nowadays, and I, I kind of just wanted to see what was over here too. But also, this is definitely the kind of deck where we don't want to put too much weight on winning, like, at all. I try not to put any weight on winning anyways. But like, you know what I mean? Oh, good, good hand, yeah. Nice. Definitely keepable. I mean, all you gotta see is Fable of the Mirror Breaker, and it's keepable, right? Opponent? Add to Mulligan, that kinda sucks. Champions for sticking it out, though. I, I appreciate you, opponent. I guess if they, if they mulliganed, they could've just... They could've just left. It would've been... <laughs> it wouldn't have been the first time, right? Ooh, some Gruel Aggro over here. See what their 2-drop is. Ooh, okay. That's pretty nasty. Pretty gross. We better get our 2-drop down. We still have Fable. But it's probably gonna be Relic? Maybe. We're, we're gonna die in, like, a couple turns here if we don't get... If we can't figure out how to get more onto the board without things dying too. Oh my goodness. That's 10 damage on turn three. I can't let the Boundless die that easy, right? I think we just take the damage. <laughs> Especially since these have trample too. Are we just like, we're just gonna be super dead, aren't we? 
Because Relic of Legends. We'll only have two mana remaining there. I guess it's gonna be Fable for another blocker, and that can actually block this. And we have to save this back as a blocker, unfortunately. The worst scenario is opponent drops a land and then goes right into Raiju. Full swing, buff the Iconoclast, and that's just like, that's just over. Oh, oh, the pain, the suffering. Oh, no. Oh, jeez. And we're dead. <laughs> and it was all too easy for the opponent. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this is the perfect match. Or a perfect example of what I mean by sometimes right on turn four. I think I mentioned this while going over the deck. You got to drop the depopulate. And we didn't even get a turn four, guys. So, Wow. There probably could have been uh, better ways to handle the beginning there. Like something to think about, of course, is early removal. Whenever I'm going over the early removal in a deck in recent standard, I always mention how important it is. And so we actually don't have a lot of early removal here. We're trying to set up something cool early on. Uh, and so whenever you're up against some superb aggro like the gruel is you know then it can be very difficult where they can just completely run over you first two games were pretty fast though that's always good news i'm gonna ditch the mirror box it's unnecessary and can totally come back with restoration they blew the mirror breaker huh i'm just gonna get the farmland down yeah, we have a ton of three and fours, and so at least we're not getting completely run down this game. Like, well, our, our life total will actually... Oh, a little bit of ramp. Very nice. I wonder if they keep this. Yeah, they keep that for next turn. Okay, before I drop Plaza of Heroes, I'm just going to go Fable of the Mirror Breaker this turn. It gives us a blocker on the board and potential ramp for anything special that we can draw into next turn. I know one thing for this deck. We could potentially drop a land and go up some removal. Like, removal definitely wouldn't hurt anything, you know? Sticky fingers! Let's go! I love the opponent's deck. We don't get to see any of these. Well, we obviously get to see Gruel Aggro, but yeah. We don't get to see this style of deck over in ranked, so that's fun. Yeah, five mana. They play a gold hound. <laughs> I wonder when they're going to use the professional face breaker's ability, because if they don't... Ooh, okay, well, yep, depopulate. Oh, wait, we... Yeah, no, we don't have double white for depopulate. We could look for it, though. Uh, those are artifacts. I'm gonna ditch the Crucible. Yeah, Plaza can't tap for the white source. Relic's a great draw for us. I guess we could ditch Plaza. Now, it's too important to be able to cast Joda if we draw it. Another Ratadrobic. I gotta be real with you guys. I think it's just going to be the Relic of Legends. That way we can successfully depopulate next turn. We're going to take a hit. They're going to ramp to high heavens. But maybe they just end up dropping all of their creatures on the board. <laughs> that would be something else. We have the Who Endures open if we want to take care of the Virus Beetle, but let's just see what they do. I'm okay with them getting some extra treasures. Uh, with the first strike on Goldhound, but yeah, they're getting an absurd amount of treasures this turn. So maybe they use the Facebreaker ability, drop a bunch of creatures on the board, and then we just drop the Depopulate and be happy about it, you know? Because it's not too much damage here. 
Oh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Opponent's deck is awesome. This is exactly what I would hope for in normal play mode. Let's take it. More treasures. And they might use the face breaker's ability here to play even more out. Now, when Requisitioner dies, they get another treasure token too. So depending on what's in their deck, I, I would keep using the face breaker's ability, but also keeping them's fine. We have the double white thanks to the Relic of Legends, and unfortunately Reflection is going to go bye-bye, but Reflection doesn't do much in this deck anyways, so this is 100% okay. Whee! Don't concede. Don't concede. You're still winning, opponent. I promise. I promise. Look, you draw off a of stick fingers. You get a treasure on... from Requisitioner. Oh, you draw off a of Depopulate too because you had Ogness? Yeah, restocking your hand. Nice. I wonder if we lay the Who Endures as a land. Nah. I'll keep it back. I'll keep it back. We have a ton of land in the deck. Um, I think there's a possibility where we just draw land for three turns in a row. And with that possibility, uh, having Who Endures available is probably pretty important. Mayhem Devil, two damage coming in. Still have a ton of mana over here. The Blitzing with the Ogness. Sweet. Yeah, nice. Another Depopulate. That'll come in handy. Let's go. Ah, uh, that's three mana open if we want to. Alright, I guess we can go Who Endures. And then we'll have White, Black... Tap down the, I guess it doesn't matter. This taps for any color and then also tapping the legendary also taps it for any color too, so. Yeah, it's worth it. This is definitely a Volted Surge style deck and they have the mana to pay the ward cost and sacrifice the treasure for the Volted Surge too. And I think that would be worth doing. Do we want to? the opponent's face for one we're gonna decline because they have haste in that deck and blocking with ratadrobic might be necessary they're still thinking about it yeah there's the voltage surge pay the two. Oh, oh what happened opponent what was that are you okay did they accidentally click through it did they accidentally decline? Burn down the house. Get some devils on the board. I don't know what happened with that Voltage Surge. Oh no, opponent. Oh, eaten alive. Well, now they have to pay two of their treasures. The second Radodrobic might hurt their feelings a little bit, especially since the Voltage Surge got wasted there. Unless I'm missing something. I don't think I am. It, it sure looked like that was an accidental click or something. Uh, we'll keep the first strike available as a blocker. We're getting dangerously low, guys. Like, these devils, are, it's, it's a problem. Maybe having some life gain in this deck could be good, too. Keep that back as a blocker. Pay the one, that's fine. Ping the opponent's face for one to do something. Hopefully we find some good... Oh, oh no. Oh, we didn't die, did we? We're, we're coming close to it, that's for sure. Oh, first strike on that for sure. Block a devil because they're still pinging a face, but we can't, like, let the attack go through, you know? Ping face, down to two. We are in danger, guys. The smelter was a, just a perfect draw. Oh, nice. Have the Plaza of Heroes open this turn too. I love the opponent's deck, guys. Oh my goodness. Guess we can swing with Radadrabic. Wait, did they have their devils as blockers last turn? Is that why I didn't swing? 
with Radodrabic, or did I? What did I do? I I don't remember. <laughs> I forget if they kept their devils back. I have I don't know right now, honestly. The first strike on the devil's great. They could always like draw another burn down the house and then like this is a bit of a problem. Uh, Seat of the Empire was a really good draw, but seeing more of our other shrines would be really good right now, too. Just, just chilling at two. Just chilling at two, guys. Get rid of a treasure, get a 3-3. Three, three. Hopefully they're just, they just drew a land over there or something, you know? I guess we have to take care of the devil, in other words, it kills us next turn. And so we'll go ahead and see to the Empire the Smelter here. They ping our face with devil, and then all they need to do is draw one more burn down the house. We are seriously in danger. Now, it also, I mean, if it was a play with fire, they would have just done that, though, instead of swinging. And eaten alive. They, what, wait, oh, they paid the extra, and it exiles it. Oh, maybe we should have used Plaza of Heroes on that. I was like, oh, yeah, we're going to get it back with Radodrabic. Now nah, it exiles it. Hey. Good draw, but I lost a shrine because I didn't use my Plaza's ability. So Plaza gives Hexproof as well, so... So it would have worked, and then we would have still had uh, the Ancient Wars shrine on the board, so... Honestly, that might have uh, cost us the game if, the, if it lets them draw enough turns to get that last damage through. Another eaten alive off the top. All right. They have enough to pay the ward too, right? So let's save the Radodrabic this turn. Probably better. Probably better than saving the other shrine, right? Maybe, maybe. Another to populate. <laughs> okay. Down to seven. What a game, guys. What a game. What is even happening? They pass. Joda. Oh my goodness, guys. GG opponent. Oh no. I feel so bad. <laughs> oh no. Oh, what a cool deck, though. Seriously. Let's go. The three eaten alive's wow. Honestly, it's pretty solid removal when you have Oh, it's sacrifice a creature or pay the three in black. For some reason I was thinking this was sacrifice a permanent too. A lot of cards here that I potentially need to go back and read again, huh? Because <laughs> we don't see some of them sometimes. Just freaking sweet deck. Alright. Let's go ahead. Hop right into the next one. Now I'm excited to see what the opponents are bringing to the table. Because we saw two cool decks that we never get to see. So, it might continue. Eee. Mmm. Uh, okay. Alright. We might die right away because the opponent goes first. But, it's fine. Like, we have the mana. We have Relic to populate for an emergency. Um, and, you know, a ton of draws. So, let's see. Another relic. Okay. Let's go Jetmere's Garden. At least we get the uh, Triomes down uh, easily here early game. Some Jund from the opponent. That was rocking a Maestro's Theater. Liliana, what are you doing here? This is unacceptable. Okay, do we like the double relics? 
over the extra mana. I think I like the double relics over the extra mana since we have so much mana in here. Oh guys, we don't have a lot of answers for that Liliana. What if they what if they ultimate that? <laughs> you know what? If they ultimate that Liliana, then it still might not be over because it is sacrifice. You won't be right? Alright, let's get rid of the coast here. We have a blue source in the headquarters and also relics, so. Okay, seeing some of our creatures is going to be very important. Oh, Fable. Anyway, separate all permanents target player controls into two piles. That player sacrifices all permanents in the pile of their choice. Yeah, unfortunately, restoration doesn't bring back land, though, so. <laughs> um, we might have a problem here, guys. <laughs> we might have a small problem. Hopefully we draw something good. This might have been a mulligan hand, but honestly, who would have thought that it was going to be the Liliana that was going to be an issue, right? Because usually it's the creatures early on that's an issue, and so the Depopulate would have handled that quite nicely. We all have things we'd rather... I guess the land... See, that's, that's the thing with Restoration, too, because we could have ditched the Relic knowing that we could bring it back with Restoration eventually, but... <gasps> we drew a creature! Oh my goodness, Liliana can minus six next turn. It doesn't matter, we're playing it. I wonder if they just kill the Boundless instead. We'll pay for this, too. Yeah, you know, a couple turns of not doing anything. Yeah, you know, it's not particularly bad, but that's okay. We're fine. Everything's fine. See, like, minus two over the minus... Now, minus six is much better, but we could always keep the one with the boundless and be all right. Get that restoration. Oh, they go for the discard. Oh, I don't even know now. I guess the depopulate... <laughs> we just have land in there. Restoration's not doing a lot here. Uh, it feels weird getting rid of Restoration. Liliana, stop it. I'm going to ditch the Restoration. We still have the uh, Jukai in the build. And so... Oh, more land. Oh, no. I'm going to just keep that to discard to the Liliana. They probably trade here to save the Liliana. <laughs> Dude, this is so. This is a really bad one, guys. This is a really bad one. I don't. I don't think we risk the swing. Like this does have trample, and the the problem is they just minus two to kill this if they want, or minus six and just devastate this whole board. They go for us sacrificing the boundless. <laughs> Off you go. We don't. Have we didn't we didn't prepare well for the Liliana here. <laughs> Did not prepare well for this. Uh, I think it's just gonna be depopulate next turn to take care of reflection and their token because I think they've ramped enough here. Really, they're just gonna go for the pass. Let's cycle the garden and see if we find something a little better. Oh, oh, there we go. Okay, double of the ancient wars. Yeah, we better just. Because they can minus two the Liliana again. Gonna have to discard one of the Ancient Wars. I'd rather take care of the Fable of the Mirror Breaker nonsense and see what's coming to us next turn. Reckoner's Bargain, nice. Reckoner's Bargain, we're seeing this card more and more often. What the heck is in their graveyard? Corpse Explosion? Monstrous War Leech? <laughs> Wait, what is this deck? I'm like, oh yeah, we've got some Jund, Jund good stuff, but no, this is another uh, little unique build here. It's ripping us apart because of that Liliana, but... Yeah, Molten Monstrosity, let's go, opponent. Alright, we got our own reflection, finally. That's good news. That's excellent news. And enough mana to do everything. You know what? You know what? 
Let's hit that Liliana and make sure they can't minus six. Yeah, Relic of Legends is pretty insane with shrines, isn't it? It's pretty cool. Drag to the bottom. Oh, man. We are struggling to remove this right now. And we got rid of the Restoration. But we're out of cards in our hand, too. So even if Restoration was the last card, they could easily plus the Liliana and make us discard it. So, like, even if we see the Shigeki, we have to be super careful because Liliana has a super pinned right now. Uh, Seat of the Empire doesn't do anything against the War Leech, which has power and toughness equal to the highest mana value among cards in your graveyard. <laughs> this is awesome, dude. Oh, man. I, I'm like, they just minus two the, their Liliana to take care of the Ancient Wars. Swing for eight. Oh, we're letting them play this out, though. If this, if this isn't like... If the opponent isn't having a blast right now, then I, I wouldn't know what would make someone happy. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> the Molten Monstrosity mixed in, too. This is so cool, man. It makes me wonder why I haven't tried out more jank from uh, Dominaria United. Because, like, Molten Monstrosity, it actually looks... Actually looks pretty solid too. Like I could see this in some gruel style deck or something like that, you know? Blood type harvester. Oh. <laughs> Jank mixed with powerful cards happens to be very, very cool. And we're like super dead though. Still gonna use the shrine ability. Ah, uh, it would have been so cool. Yeah, this is like the perfect style to bring back the Brilliant Restoration. I guess the three Ancient Wars, we only have three in here, you know, so I guess that isn't the greatest thing to hit back with the Restoration. We would have only gotten one of them and then the Goshintai, but so like if we had like the Radadrobic stuff. Um, yeah, either way, we're dead here. We can have them draw on Shakedown and I guess, no, yeah, that... That works, and then the War Leech uh, goes in. We'll take the action. Drop the good game. Very sick opponent. Very fun. Guys, I'm gonna say we have time for one more. The matches are surprisingly fast. I probably should have mulliganed there. Again, kind of by fault thinking the Depopulate was gonna be able to handle any scenario. I, I wasn't preparing myself for Liliana just locking us down. But it's definitely something to think about, as that could happen. Couple Radadrobics, that's what you like to see. What's not great about this hand is how expensive it is, my goodness. I'm gonna give it a shot though, start with the Jetmere's Garden. 26 land in the deck, tons of uh, land that comes out untapped. So, we should be fine for turn three. Ancient Wars is a terrific draw. Yeah, untapped mana for the next couple turns would be the best case. Nice. Okay, Gallagreeters is a problem. Might be able to force out some removal here onto our 2-2 instead of them playing a creature or something. Oh, except it, they could have a creature that is removal. Well, the tapped land does mean that, yeah, we forced out some kind of removal at least instead of a creature. So I actually like the double Radadrobic here. I don't think we need the Proving Ground necessarily. I, I guess filtering through is fine. I guess filtering through is fine. Uh, Ayo, nice, okay. Radadrobic's ward ability probably means it survives a turn. And I think I'd rather start with the Radadrobic over the shrines. Like, we could... It really depends. Like, the getting the Goshen tied down is pretty good, too, since it looks like this might be the style of deck that wants to go wide. We do get Reflection. Um... 
Venom Connoisseur has Alliance. Wait, hold on, I'm trying to read. Ah! Is this a citizen build? Oh no, this is a druid. This is, this looks like potentially like a budget style alliance deck. It gains death touch. If it's the second time this ability has resolved this turn, all creatures you control gain death touch. Oh, okay, death touch could be a problem. All right, we got Goshen Tide number two in hand and the Brilliant Restoration too. I think this is an easy double block for the opponents. And so we're gonna hold back. And Goshintai is a terrific blocker here because we got Radadrobic on the board to finally try the Radadrobic Shrine combo, right? So. Okay, so Liberty Fencer. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on Sir Liberty Fencer. Okay. Okay, yeah. Looks like uh, like a budget style alliance and it looks pretty cool. Wait, it doesn't have death touch, does it? Oh, you may tap another untapped. I mean, I guess we'll just do this in case there's something up with this treasure token, right? Because they would have had to use that ability right when it attacked, right? Yeah, I, I think so. I don't think they could have waited to use that ability. Uh, we can use Reflection to copy Goblin Shaman if we want to ramp that style. It gets us more white sources for the restoration when it comes time. Also, let's us save Crucible and get AO down. Pretty good. I like it. Let's do it. Let's us actually... Oh no, we have to still play the Crucible. What am I saying? Because we use a mana to tap it. <laughs> so, we could go... Go Shintai Ancient Wars. Yeah, we might as well. We, we might as well play this. It, it might as well be a mana, you know? What was the point of using Reflection? No, there really wasn't one, was there? Not a great point. For some reason in my head, I was like, oh yeah, we're ramping with this. But no, it still cost one for the Reflection. <laughs> I guess that goes to show how often we actually get to use Reflection's ability. <laughs> I know uh, some of you in the comments were talking about that. It, it does seem rare. It does. We've been seeing it more often. It just has a huge target on its back. It really does. Look at this. This is a depopulate ready board, man. Okay, so we're going to uh, chump. And this is first strike. So we're going to get rid of that whole death touch nonsense. We're going to chump, chump right we're gonna get the goshintai back and then be able to play the other one from our hand okay nice let's do this got all the chumps in uh yep shared purpose is back <laughs> that's so cool man brilliant restoration still isn't open but we do have uh I think let's just go shrines over the AO. We like we have AO available. You know it's pretty cool. We can reflection this this one since it's not legendary. It's actually pretty cool. We don't have enough mana this time around. We're just gonna get some chump blockers. A two four not worth swinging into by any means. Just saving everything back. And we'll go with chump blockers this turn. A lot of them. <laughs> Six spirits, guys. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the Battle of Jank over here in normal play mode. <laughs> I had a blast today, guys. It's good to see different, just different decks in general, right? I'm actually, I'm actually pretty surprised. The last couple times that I played normal play mode, it was just meta. It's probably because well, every time I play play mode, I make sure that we're not, like, we don't have, like, a super competitive deck. Because if we do, then obviously we want to take it into ranked. So, I don't know. They go for the full swing. But I think first, 
first thing we gotta do, guys, we have to take care. We almost have enough for the restoration. I guess. We'll take care of Gallagreeters because they don't have anything in their hand. We'll block the, with the first strike here. We could take a bunch, but I think trumping the six is fine. And then, I guess, block here too, right? Successfully. Take four. Could block with this one too. We just get it back with uh, Radadrobic. I, I guess. We, let's do it, because we might top deck another one that we can play. <laughs> Should be pretty cool. Okay, this is fine. Oh, they might find something here. Okay. Crowbar token is out of here, and all of our tokens are out of here, but we'll get them back next turn. Yay, shrine combo with Radadrabic. I'm glad we went into one more game, guys. Equip, okay. I, I, like, there's so much going on that it's kind of like, I, I don't really know exactly where to start. Go Fable over the uh, AO, and we'll have two mana available. Let's go ahead. Okay, all, they, they're, they're tapped out, so all of our, like, Vigilance can swing in. I'll keep the Ancient Wars for the first strike. Getting the treasure token to be able to cast Restoration is probably pretty important. And we'll just go with jump blockers and decline this so we can keep the treasure. And now, at this point, we can block with the Ancient Wars and then Brilliant Restoration to bring all of it back, which just seems pretty insane. They go for the draw. Wedding announcement, nice. A great draw. More counters on the fencer here. Pretty cool stuff, man. I'm going to ditch the Jetmere's Garden. See what we find. Another Jetmere's Garden, sure. Um, Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Brilliant Restoration. It seems a little unnecessary, doesn't it? It just hits a couple of these. I guess the AO is much better. Oh, wait, were we planning on swinging? No. No, they have a great board state. I guess we could get another uh, treasure uh, this turn, though. We could start swinging with, with all of our 1-1s, one too. But I'm going to wait. <laughs> There's probably a better way that I could have played this out. Let's... Let's play the garden, that's fine. That's fine, I guess extra mana is pretty important. We'll go, do we have the four white now? We have plaza, one, two, three. I guess so? More one ones is probably good. AO can buff this wide board state if there's like something. So reflection, you can, it, you have to create a token of a non-legendary creature. That's why we're not, like, comboing off with AO. Wow. Hold. Oh, they get rid of our Fable of the Mirror Breaker before it flips, too. I mean, I guess I'll block the 1-1. One, one. That was weird. What was the swing for, exactly? All right, we can pay 7, so that way we can swing with AO. That's probably worth it. They get to draw off of the, <laughs> the hold. <laughs> Let's swing with all of these two. And what I'm going to do, it's a little risky, but I'm going to swing with the Goblin Shaman as well. Uh, and that way we can pay for one of the shared purpose to get more chump blockers down. That's the plan. We have a, like a ton of blockers. Wait, I swung with AO, right? Okay, good. Whew. That's good. Yeah, the AO swing's important because we have to start doing damage. They're about to buff their wide board state. Oh, they get another 1-1 one, one here. 
What do they plan on blocking with that? I guess just take out more of my uh, cards. And get another creature on the board, too. 10 damage over here and 5 in the air, so pretty solid, guys. And we're going to pay to get 3 more chump blockers on the board, so... I don't see Trample over there yet, but they could find Trample. Venom Connoisseur. <laughs> nice. They go for the swing. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to block with Ao Into the fencer. We're going to chump, and we're going to uh, safely take you out and you and take you out and we will safely block there as well i think that i think that is completely fine oh no the opponent conceded i mean i understand but i really wanted to put all the counters from the ao onto this wide board state that was sweet gg opponent um <laughs> we don't get to see a, an alliance build that often so nice 60% total win rate over here in normal play mode. I, I don't even... I don't even know. <laughs> the deck is definitely janky, guys. Let me go over it here just for a minute. 100% janky, but man, once you get the Ratadrobic, uh down with your shrines, that is so cool, guys. Relic of Legends is sweet with shrines since you can just essentially tap them down to use the ability. A Brilliant Restoration didn't even come into play, did it? But it would once in a while, I guess. Ao was pretty sick in that last match. Jota is awesome as always. It's just such a fun card to build around. Did we get to see Mirbox on the board today? Yeah, in the first game, but then the opponent ended up conceding there, huh? Uh, Shigeki is pretty cool. I don't think we saw it today either, but yeah, being able to bring back restoration from the grave and stuff like that. Uh, that one match where we got completely locked down by Liliana tells me that we should probably add something that just removes planeswalkers. Like, Ancient Wars can hit planeswalkers, but if it if it's too late and it already locked you down, then it's kind of really hard to catch up from that, you know? Okay, well, the Mirror Breaker was obviously uh, terrific, and I don't think the mana base gave us any issues. One thing I would do or consider is dropping one mana, since there's 26 in here, it's a lot. Going down to 25 would be fine, and then just putting an extra early removal. And additionally, maybe going down to three Ratadrobic. I really wanted to see it today, obviously, for the combo, but going down to three would be fine more early removal would make the deck a little bit better um but yeah overall either way e no matter how powerful you make it the shrines are going to be tough and still going to be pretty janky so guys if you made it this far into the video then y'all are champions and i super duper appreciate you and i will see you in the next video